Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is infallible. It's full of integrity. We thank you, Lord, that it's full of life. It is life and truth. And so, Lord, we look to you and your word this morning uh, to have ears to hear. Father God, that we might go to that next level that you have for us. In this year, 2014, Father, that we would take on and do what you called us to do, Lord, and be who you called us to be. And I thank you, Father God, that you encourage us and inspire us and exhort us this morning through your word to walk by faith walk, Father, to be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. From Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 3, Jesus is speaking, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. The fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Verse 6. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some hundred. Verse 9. And he said unto them, He that had the ears to hear, let him hear. That's what we're going to talk about today. He that had the ears to hear, let us hear. Hallelujah. Now we want to welcome our viewers by way of internet and if you're listening by means of radio or maybe you're playing a CD or watching a DVD. We do appreciate you taking the time to join us in this Sunday morning service here in beautiful Bradenton, Florida. I'm Pastor Chuck Kennedy, and you're tuned into Faith International Christian Center, our Sunday morning service. And again, we're talking about he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, that's the Lord talking there. Amen. Jesus is saying that. I don't think his word is any less more meaningful in that day that he spoke it in person than it is today when he's speaking it through his Bible or through his people. Amen. Right? Amen. It's the same. It carries the same weight, Amen. is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's the same when he stood and spoke it. It's the same when I'm standing and speaking it on his behalf. Amen. Right? Amen. You with me? Amen. So, he's saying to us, he that hath ears to hear, yeah. let him hear. Yeah. He's putting the burden of responsibility on you. He said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay? Right. Meaning that you have the choice to hear or to reject. Right? right? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, he prefaced that with this parable of all different scenarios about the, the seed being the word, mm -hmm. having been sown and what happened with it. Right. Unfortunately, the first four verses were people that heard but something happened along the way and choked it out. And the last verse of it was where it fell on the good ground. And those people brought forth either 30, 60, or 100 folk. Now, it could be that they brought first year 30, the second year 60, and the last year 100 folk. I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't mean that some of them just stayed at 30, although that could be too. It could mean that they just reached 30, so they went to the next level like we want to do. They reached 60. With the next level, reached 100, right? Okay. And so, but the key is that each of them heard the same word, the seed. The seed was the same. Okay? But something happened with each of them, and the most of them ended up on the wayside. But there were some that ended up bringing forth fruit. Now that's our goal, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's our goal. So, he that hath the ears, yep. let him hear. Amen. Uh, I shared a little bit last week, and maybe a little bit more today. There is a concern in my personal life of such a difference in the schools of theology today oh, in the churches being oh, taught. Man. My concern is not that there's different camps or different schools because I can't prevent that. 
My concern is that the people, the sheep, not recognizing one from the other. And that is a problem. It's a big problem. Because what happens is they come up confused Christians because they have so many input into their life. They're right. hearing and receiving right. some truth and some not truth. Mm -hmm. right. So it's causing the garden to have problems. Got some thorns in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. You as a Christian, a mature Christian, a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, Word of Faith Christian, must be able to recognize the difference from the teachers, yeah. and align yourself with the correct one according right. to the Word of God. That's right. Yes, That's right. Now, I know that when people first come into the church, born again, they're babies and they're very much easily influenced. Mm -hmm. They can be led astray real easily, can get indoctrinated incorrectly very quickly. And it seems that the demonic uh, unbelief side, they gravitate to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most likely influenced by Satan himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't see in the spirit that well to tell you that for sure, but I would say that's probably a pretty good generality. Yeah. 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 Um, so we expect that to a degree. That's why it's important to have a church, a good church. Yeah. And, to, and to be able to bring people to a good church where they can receive love, care, yeah. and True. discipleship. True. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's why it's important for you to be involved in good church so you can go from glory to glory. Yeah. Not just stay where you're at. Not If you're a 30-folder, you don't just stay a 30-folder. You move on. 40, 50, 60, and on up the ladder. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, now, if you're unable to recognize the difference in truth and error, faith or unbelief, because a lot of people preach very anointed preaching, but there's no faith really there. It's yeah. their own opinions, their own ideas, and, uh, and they move people to get saved. And it's, it's quite, uh, quite good to that level. Right. Um, but if, you're, if, you're, if you don't understand truth, Faith, at, according to the word, you're you're going to be you're going to get knocked off. It's going to end up one of these first four verses instead of the last verse. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, even though you you obviously you need a good church. I think this is a good church because I'm the pastor of this good church. <laughs> but I'm not saying we're the only good church. You understand? There is uh, uh, many good churches, and there are other good churches in this area um, that I would recommend. I'm trying to think of his name over there. So, so. <laughs> Keith. Keith Moore. If I didn't go to this church personally, I'd go to Keith Moore. That's where I'd be going. I don't care how long it takes me to drive there. I don't care how far away it is. I don't care what conveniences they offer or don't offer. I don't care how nice the seat is or not. I don't care how cold or hot the building is. He's got the word that gives me freedom, liberty, victory that I have to have. I'm not interested in just a club, an association of just joining hands with friends, although I love friends. I need some meat. Hallelujah. And I can tell you that he, he definitely gives it out. Now, I, I haven't been to his church, so I don't know what happens around Sunday morning. Because I think he's in um, Arkansas somewhere on Branson, Missouri. They sent it by video. That's nice, too, but nothing like a real thing. You know? But anyway, uh, I'm just saying we're not the only one. I don't want you to think I'm in here preaching that you got to come to my church or you're not saved. That's cultish. Yeah. Not that way. Okay? I love you wherever you go to church. You tell me I'm going to the barn down the road. <laughs> that's where you think God's told you to go. I'm for you. I'm going to miss you, but, you know, that's up to you. But 
But you've got to come to the place in this, what I'm talking about here, you've got to get to the place where you can understand the teaching that's coming forward, whether it's really true, whether it's error, or whether it's a mixture. And you've got to find the one with the truth and get in it. Hallelujah. Every time the devil tries to tell you it's too far to go, it's not convenient to go, the size is too small, too big. I've heard of some both ways. It's too big. I don't like a big church. Too small. I don't like a small church. The personality is there. I don't like the pastor. I don't like the pastor's wife. I don't like this. I don't like that. Every one of those, if you're in the church you're supposed to be in, every one of those voices are excuses from Satan himself to make you believe that enough to pull you out of hearing that word that's, that's your life. That's going to set you free. And get you just comfortable enough somewhere else where you're not being challenged, you're not being motivated to resist the devil and stand against the devil, and get you complacent in there where he can beat you around until you go to heaven. That's not for me. I don't think it's for you either. Hallelujah. So look at Mark, the fourth chapter again. Let's go skip on down to verse 21. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? Not to be set on a candlestick. In other words, the light is to shine, right? Amen. Well, there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. In other words, truth prevails. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. So you can't stop the going forth of truth, whether you like it or not. Amen. Verse 23 again says, if any man have ears to hear, make a choice to hear. Listen to what I'm saying. Choose to hear. Okay? You have to make that choice. Verse 24, he said unto them, listen now, take heed what you hear. That's very important. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. What he's saying is, to the degree you uh, put your confidence in it, to you, you measure it to be trustworthy, true, then that's what you're going to get out of it. Okay? Take heed what you hear, with what measure you meet, with the degree you measure it, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. So you, you get hold of truth, you're not going to stay the same. You're going to get more truth. And then you're going to get more truth. But now look at the one who doesn't have truth, who thought he had truth. Verse 25. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, now listen, he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. That means there's going to be some rude awakenings. And that means when he thinks he has security and safety in the truth that he thought he had, which is not really true, right. then that rug is going to be pulled out from him under him at some point, maybe in his life, maybe when he stands before Jesus. I don't know. It could be both. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because he trusted in something. He heard something and laid hold of it. He measured it to be greater than truth of the Word of God. Right? Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, the one who has, really has something, he's going to get more. But the one who thought he had something, even what he thought he had, will eventually be ripped out from an under. Wow. you got to be able to know truth and error. You've got to be able to know it. It's not optional. Well, here it is right here. Now, it's not just a matter of reading a book. A lot of people read the book and they don't change. A lot of people have these sitting on their dresser at home, you know, just sits there and collects dust. It doesn't do any good. You got to have this and the Holy Ghost. Amen. It takes both. You got to have the Holy Spirit to enlighten you to what this is saying, truth wise. Amen. In your own human wisdom, you read this Bible from a wisdom of human standpoint, of your experience for the most part. Yes. Or what you've been taught, or heard, or told. Which can be a mixture, and we know it's a mixture. And so that influences how you see it until the light comes on. That light here that he said, the candle, you don't put it under a bed 
or snuff it out. That light comes on and enlightens you to truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you've got to pursue that. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes truth will come to me. I'll just ride down the road. And boom. I just, my eyes are open. I see something I've never seen. Sometimes I'll be in prayer. I'll just be speaking in tongues. I'll just be praying. I won't even be reading my Bible. And boom. The scripture will open the light. Into it. Most times, though, it's when I'm reading my Bible after having spent time in prayer. I'm reading my Bible, meditating on it, studying, running some references thinking about it, then God, boom, it's like he opens it wide open. Yeah. And, uh, and that is true. Now, always check your revelations. Yeah. Okay? If you got some new revelation out there, you got hold of something that ain't right. Uh -oh. <laughs> new to you, maybe, but not new to the body of Christ. It's already been revealed. So, that's another reason you need a close, close group of like-minded believers so that when you share what you've got, yeah. you can realize, bounce it off on and see if it's right or not. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, most of the time it's right if you've been in the Word studying it and the Lord opens up that truth to you. But uh, but then there are some like, you know, that's how the Mormons got started. Joseph Smith had a demon appear to him, Maroni, and uh, said that... Uh, uh, said, here, this book is a better book. You know, this is the one you need. So, and uh, so, obviously that is uh, wrong, but he thinks because the Spirit appeared to him that that was God. And uh, But what he didn't know, it was a little G God. It was a devil. It's not our God. Hallelujah. But nevertheless, a big denomination started. I see him on their bicycles all the time. Hallelujah. They got nice big buildings down on Cortez Road. Hallelujah. So uh, it, they're there, but it's not true. Hallelujah. Now, look at Luke 21, if you would, please. Luke 21. Luke chapter 21 and verse 8 says... Jesus again speaking, take heed that you be not deceived. Again, the ball is in your court. He's not keeping you from being deceived. He's telling you, take heed that you don't get deceived. Okay? Now that's interesting. You know, we think God's going to keep us from all this stuff. And thank God he does protect us, as I shared earlier, protecting me in that car wreck when I didn't see it coming. But you have your part to do too. That's right. Verse 8 says, Jesus said, take heed that you don't be deceived. Yes. For many will come in my name saying, I'm Christ. The time draw near. Go ye not, therefore after. Take heed what you hear. Right. They're saying, we're the Christ. Follow me. Yeah. Yeah. Take heed what you hear. Hallelujah. Now, in this here, he goes through a scenario of what's going to happen in the final end time. That's the rest of the chapter for the most part. And uh, you know that we are living in the end times, right? I mean, uh, whether it's the end times for everybody, I don't know, but it's the end time for us because we have 20, 50, 80 years left. I don't know how you are. Uh, so we're in the end times. I believe we're in the end times, period. I think that uh, his return is very close. Yeah. Um, everything seems to be lining up in that direction. However, Jesus said, he gave all these instances of what's going to happen here. Now, the same chapter, Luke 21, look at verse 34. He says again, take heed to yourselves. We're reading a lot about this take heed. You know, I think God is encouraging us to, to, to just do a self-check, a self-evaluation by the Holy Ghost, not a con condemnation check, not a feel down in the don'ts check, of, oh, I'll never make it, I'm a terrible person. No, we're not talking about any of that. We're talking about just keeping our heart tender before the Lord, open to truth, in truth, and staying in the Word of God. Verse 34, he says, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time 
your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unaware. Now, isn't that some of the mention in the seed and the sower? Yes. You know, and talking about the cares of this life, choking out the word. Well, here it is again. He said, take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart, watch the heart there, the heart, it's the generator of all your life right there, uh, becomes overcharged with the cares of this life, you know, conveniences, whatever you want to call it there. So that that day come upon you unaware. Whether it be by the rapture coming unaware or you leave out of this life unaware. I mean, you know, because you weren't living right. Verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Verse 36. Now look at this. This is a good news message. Watch you therefore... And pray always. Amen. Now look at this. That you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Amen. And to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. That's a powerful verse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, verse 34 starts the paragraph. He said, take heed. Watch out. Watch your heart. So that you don't get involved in life's cares and all the busyness of day-to-day -day affairs. <laughs> I mean, you got to live here. I'm not saying that. I, I work every day. Um, and so I, I'm well aware of, uh, uh, of life and its cares. I'm well aware I have to cast them on the Lord continually. Because they try to come on me. Everybody tells me at work, take care. And I keep saying, I'm trying to get rid of my cares. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, he says, watch, therefore, and pray always. But you may be accounted worthy to escape so that you can escape. Amen. All these things, all the things you, you go home and read it in Luke 21, all the end time things, you can escape. That means here on earth you escape it. Tragedy, calamity, sickness, disease, poverty, growth. You can escape all these things and you stand before the Son of Man. So when he returns... I personally believe the primary of this scripture, the meaning of it, is that you'll be taken out before all the bad things happen. However, let's go with the dual meaning this morning. I mean, I need to have it today. I'm not just going to heaven. I need heaven today. Okay? I needed it this week. I need it now. All right? So, he's saying to us, don't get yourself caught up in the world's affairs so that your heart is overtaken with it more than the Word of God. That's not easy to do. You understand? It's not easy to say no to all this stuff because it's so real and it's your world every day. You have to make a conscious decision effort to do it on a daily basis. Every morning, every afternoon, every evening. Every day, turn off the garbage. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Shut the radio off. I rarely listen to my radio on my phone. Very rare. And if I did, it wouldn't be at Christian Station. But I spend that time talking to Father, communicating with God. And I have vowed not to be on my phone ever again in my car. Hallelujah. Just in case you call me, and you get my voicemail, that's why. I'm driving, and I'll call you back. But I'm not going to answer it while I'm driving anymore. Amen. I was not on the phone at that time, but nevertheless, it wakes you up to a lot of things you took for granted before. Amen, bro. Hallelujah. So, anyway, we're to watch and pray that we can escape all the things, the clutter, the ground clutter on earth today, and... We can go in the rapture. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. All right. So, look at Acts 28 real quick. Like I've just got a couple of minutes. I just want to encourage you this morning because um, I know you are people of faith. You wouldn't come here if you weren't. But just because you're people of faith, I don't want you to get complacent either. Uh, I want you to, to press on in. Like 
everybody said this morning already, uh, and that's just the word of the Lord. Even Bonnie prophesied, have ears to hear. That's right. And uh, that was just the Lord confirming what he had told me to share. We need ears to hear, right? Amen. Uh, Acts 28, beginning in verse 23, this is Paul. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. Paul's preaching the kingdom. Persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. Now look at verse 24. And some of them believed the things that were spoken, and some believed not. Isn't that the way it is today? I can't, I can't tell you the number of people that have come through this church. Some stayed with us one service. Some stayed with us many services and still have left out mm -hmm. and, uh, for varying reasons. And so some receive what we say and some it just keeps hammering on them so hard that they have to make a decision. I can't do that. I've had them tell me, I, I, I'm going to be sick, so... I don't want to come to your church because you don't think I'm supposed to be sick. Is that a reason not to come to the Word? Uh, you know, but what that is is condemnation from the devil saying to them, they're going to think I'm not spiritual because I got sick. Listen, I have attacks too. You've heard me. I have attacks as well. I just don't let the attacks get me down. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't, you know, try to get my wife's sympathy. Although that'd be nice. <laughs> I tell her after the fact. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what I'm saying is, uh, the truth goes forward, but the truth will cause you to change. If you refuse to accept the change, then you'll change the other way, and you'll pretty soon depart from it. Right? Right? So here, that's what's happened. They, some were here and didn't believe, and some didn't believe. Verse 25, yeah. when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Yeah. Yeah. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing you'll hear, and shall not understand. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing you'll see, and not perceive. Yeah. For the heart of this people, the heart, the heart, the heart yeah. of this people has become gross. And their eyes are dull of, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. They've done it, not God. You see that? They have done it. Right. Don't blame God. Amen. Amen. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted. And I would heal them. I should heal them. Do you see that? Amen. Yeah. There's healing in truth. Mm -hmm. This faith walk is not just a, a fad. God is a faith God. Mm -hmm. Hebrews says, without faith it's impossible to please Him. Right. Faith is not just a theory. Faith must be an action. <coughs> if you're going to really go in truth and be not deceived, you're going to have to act the Word. You're going to have to take the word over everything that's screaming at you that it ain't going to work, and you're going to have to walk it out and see it work. That's the only way to open it up. Nobody can teach it into you. Nobody can shove it into you. Nobody can buy it for you. Nobody can take you to the store and get it for you. You're going to have to take what's on the pages of this Bible, make the quality decision. This Bible is more real, it's eternal, than my present circumstances. And I choose, no matter what it looks like is going to hurt me, I choose to walk by this word. Amen. And when you get out there on that water like Peter was, yeah. Jesus out there with you. And you'll see the miraculous power of God. It turns on the light in your heart. And you see. Amen. Hallelujah. And you see, wow, I've been missing it for all these years. That's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I was a spirit Feel, tongue talking, Holy Ghost, charismatic, church going, Bible toting Christian that was as defeated as you could get. Oh my God. All kinds of problems. Never had a dollar. Didn't know what a dime was, really. I mean, I had problems you wouldn't believe. And I was 
full of God. What is the problem, Lord? Well, the problem was I wasn't in the faith walk. I believe there was a God. He was able. Just couldn't get him to ex exercise his ability on me. But I thought he had to do everything. I didn't understand I had a part to play in this. Never was taught it. And so the light came on one day and I saw faith walk. I used to, I used to not listen to Brother Copeland. Can you believe that? He's my favorite now. But I used to not listen to Brother Copeland. I mean, I didn't not like him or anything. I, I just, it just wasn't important. And uh, the, the, the faith message to me, I, I used to say, I can say what I want. I can say what I want. You know, they, they're, they're off base. What's, that, what's the problem with me talking the way I want to talk? If I feel bad, I'll say I'm feeling bad. You've heard it when you tell people. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. that's the way I was until the light came on. Amen. Well, see, for years I was that way. Finally, the light came on, and I said, whoa, what I have been missing here. And so I, I obviously made changes in my life, and uh, it just began to grow and snowball. And... All the things that I thought I never wanted God to take away, I all of a sudden wanted you to take away. Right. Like my delicious coffee. Mm. <laughs> oh, I love coffee. Or my wonderful news around the clock. CNN and yeah, that right. all that, you know, that. blaring that 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and if I'm still awake at 12 o'clock. <laughs> living a faith life until my eyes were open. Nobody could tell me different right. until God opened my eyes. You can't argue with your friends and family and tell them the truth. You can't argue with them. You're going to have to pray God opens their eyes and live an exemplary life in front of them. Amen. They'll see a difference. Amen. But for you and I, we've got to be able to recognize truth. Right. We must be able to. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications. You take heed. You listen to evil communication. It will corrupt your way of life. God will not be mocked. Hallelujah. Luke 14 said, The salt is good unless it's lost its savor. How does salt lose its uh, savor? Well, elements, right? Air, sunshine, these kind of things. Well, that's what we live in. So we are the salt of the earth, but if the elements of earth drains away our savor, we're of no use until we get back. Now, you hear what I'm saying? Don't be mad at me. I'm just telling you. I don't want to be just another church like the world church. I don't want to be just uh, another uh, uh, Christian by name only. I want to impact this nation. Hallelujah. You think, well, we're mighty small. It doesn't matter. We're going to do what God has told us to do, whatever size we are. Right. Hallelujah. Well, Ephesians 5.26 says, with the washing of the water of the word, we're cleansed, sanctified, set apart. In Romans 12.2, I'm just giving you these scriptures because I'm out of time. Romans 12.2 said, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. That is the root word, metamorpho. It's just like a metamorphosis. You become the great incredible Hulk. <laughs> when you transform your mind. I'm talking spiritually speaking, okay? Is that all right? You know, I don't watch Hulk or whatever, but I, I know of him. Uh, Superman, if you please. That was in my day. Superman. Become Superman. A, a metamorphosis takes place when you actually, your mind is transformed to agree with the truth of the Word of God, you're no longer knocked about by every sleight of hand, every wind of doctrine that comes along, by every disease that tries to knock on your door, by every time that the checkbook tells you a negative balance or something. You're not moved by this stuff anymore. You become the super whore. <laughs> Spiritually speaking. Uh, all right, let me close with this. I'm way over. Jeremiah 15. Forgive me, please. This is my last scripture. 
This is my last one before my last one before my last one. Verse close. Jeremiah 15. Verse 19. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. God is speaking. If you return, then will I bring thee again. And thou shalt stand before me. Okay, if you'll get rid of the junk, yeah. come to God, yeah. 2014, okay? And thou shalt stand before me and, say and. and. This is something else you got to do here. Yeah. If you'll take forth the precious from the vial, yeah, so you shall be as my mouth. Yeah. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. In other words, the people who are not going to go with you yeah. don't go back to their way, That's right. mm -hmm. but live your life God's truth way until they see the difference and turn and come back to God yeah. with you. Right. You see what he's saying? Yeah. How do you do this? You take the precious from the vial, the vial being the unbelief, the garbage that's circulating, all the doctrinal junk that's out there. You, you separate the precious out of it. Right. What's going forth is truth today that you know to be true. Mm -hmm. And you adhere to that. And you get rid of that vile junk. Mm -hmm. And then you're with God. You come back to God. You're with God. Mm -hmm. And then those people who say, well, why don't we do this anymore? Why don't you do this anymore? Mm -hmm. And then instead of going back to that, right. you say, well, I've got all the truth. Yeah. And you, don't, you can't preach it into them. You, you just can't. I wish I could. Yeah, I know. You can you can spark some uh, some thought by sharing words with them as to be led by the Spirit, not under condemnation, not beating them up. Yeah. But but you, you you what you do is you live your life over the next few months and years, and they say, you you know you really changed. You used to do it this way. Mm -hmm. This used to happen with you. They see it. That 30, 60, 100 fold yeah. comes out. Yeah. People notice it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, he says here, verse 20, And I will make thee unto this people, look at this now, I will make you unto these people that oppress you a fenced, brazen wall. Yeah. Yeah. And they will fight against you because they think they're right. Uh -huh. exactly. They'll fight against you but they shall not prevail Amen. against you. Why? For I am with thee. He was riding with me Monday night. I testify. I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Verse 21, last verse. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. That can be poverty, it can be a disease, it can be anything that's oppressing you. And I will redeem you out of the hand of the terror. Hallelujah. His word, living what he says to me. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this time together. Lord, we commit to you this morning. January 12, 2014, to be doers of your word, yes. thus expelling all deception yes. in our lives. Yes. Yes. Father, we're not satisfied with 30-fold or 60-fold fruit. We're looking for that 100-fold. Yes. 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 Father, we're not satisfied seeing lost people around us going to hell. No. No. We want to have an impact. Amen. Father, we want to have that impact your way. N not by my own personal compassion, but from the love of Christ that compels me and changes lives around me. And I thank you, Father, for these beautiful people in this church that love you and that have a desire to do these things together. And Lord, we encourage one another this morning. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Every need man. Thank you for the beautiful talents that you brought forth in the church, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for a facility to meet in. Thank you for the precious people who painted this facility, Lord. What a blessing. 
Thank you, Lord God, for those who clean it up and decorate it. Those who turn the air on and off and do the various things here, Lord, that we can come in and enjoy your presence with us at our weekday meetings and weekend meetings. Father, we give you our hearts afresh and anew this morning. Thank you, Lord. I offer myself. We offer ourselves living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable is our reasonable service. We refuse to be conformed to the world's way of thinking, the religious way of thinking, the unbelief way of thinking. We refuse to be conformed to that way of thinking. But we are transformed, metamorphosed. Hallelujah, by the renewing of our mind through your Holy Scripture, enlightened by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. This is our year. Thank you, Lord. This place won't hold us at the end of the year. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. You're our King, our God. Our life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. I thought I was going to go over that.